We need to review Pythagorean's theorem in order to talk and do the math that's related to crystal structures. So let's do a quick review. First of all, you're probably familiar in the sense of, say I have a box, and the length of each side is x, and we have a diagonal y, and I want to know the length, uh, I want to know y in terms of x, essentially. I can use Pythagorean's theorem where y squared equals x squared plus x squared, the sum of each of the sides, and you add that up. In this case, that's 2x squared, so take the square root of y, and then the square root of 2x squared, y is x root 2. So you're probably familiar with that, but potentially from your junior high days, whenever you took algebra, you're a little less familiar with the case where you have a box. So, or maybe I should say a cube with some depth. So something like this. And now, I'm, if you look at this picture, this model here, I'm not interested in the face diagonal, which is what we just found but I'm interested in the cube diagonal, the distance between my fingers, okay? So I'm interested, again, in a cube diagonal, so the distance from here to there. Okay, we can also use Pythagorean's theorem to determine that. Again, if the length of each side is x, so I have a perfect cube, and I want to know this distance, which we'll call y again, then I can use Pythagorean's theorem to solve for y. y in three dimensions now is just the sum of the squares of each of the sides of the cube, or x squared plus x squared plus x squared, the sum of each of the sides. So now y squared is 3x squared, or in this case, the square root of y is just y. The square root of the other side is x root 3. So this is Pythagorean's theorem in three dimensions. One more thing that you'll need to know while we're doing this is something about units. Because often when we're working with crystal structures, we're going to work uh, not with meters per se, but you'll be seeing picometers and angstroms. And so you would need to remember that 10 to the 12 picometers is 1 meter, and 10 to the 10 angstroms is 1 meter. Picometer is an SI unit, angstrom is an English unit that is convenient because the length of a bond is approximately 1 to 2 to 3 angstroms. So it's quite a convenient unit. And then you'll need to know, which you've seen many times, that 100 centimeters is a meter. These will be quite convenient. Let me show you why. We're going to be finding the volume of cubes, which would just be the length of the cube cubed. And so we will be given the length in units of, say, for example, picometers or angstroms and we'll be asked for the volume in cubic centimeters. So that means I need to convert my picometers to centimeters before cubing it in order to find the volume. Okay, so we'll often have to do this conversion. So just make sure you, that you know if you're given, say, z amount of picometers, that you'll need to convert first from picometers to meters and then from meters to centimeters. Then you'll have centimeters and that's something you can cube to find volume. 